Micro ATX builds can give you the right balance between cost and size. They're obviously not as small as many ITX builds, but they can still be less than half the size of a standard mid tower without the ITX tax. So that's what we're gonna be building today, a top tier gaming PC in what's become probably my favorite micro ATX case of this year so far. Later on, we'll talk about this video sponsor Squarespace, but for now, let's get started. All right, so let's talk about the parts and the CPU I'll be using is the Intel i5-13600K. This has been my go-to Intel CPU for gaming this year. It has 14 cores, six of which are performance cores and can boost up to 5.1 gigahertz. What I like about the CPU is that it has some flexibility if you're on a tighter budget, as it supports both DDR4 and DDR5 RAM. So pairing this with a DDR4 motherboard is gonna save you some money. Now, personally, if I was building a brand new system in 2023, I would probably go with DDR5, as it has come down in price quite a lot this year, but it all really depends on the budget, of course. On top of that, we also have the 14th gen Intel chips now available, which is causing these 13th gen chips to go on sale. I'm seeing the 13600 for as much as $60 less than the 14th gen counterpart. And the difference in gaming performance between these two is minor. Of course, there's also AMD alternatives as well. You could look at the 7700 at a similar price point or my top choice, the 7800X3D. Now I have plenty of builds with that chip on the channel if you're interested in seeing how that performs. And going with one of those is likely to give you a longer upgrade path as the LGA 1700 socket may not last that much longer for Intel. Okay, so the motherboard we'll be plugging this into is the ASUS TUF B760M. This is a B series motherboard, so it's gonna have mid range features, but it's it's also not going to be as costly as a Z series board. This also won't allow for overclocking. Now, how important that is will be up to you. I've always been happy with the performance of the 13600 at stock. And so if you can find it, you could get the 13600 non-K instead. This particular model motherboard has both DDR4 and DDR5 versions. So you will wanna make sure that you pick up the right one. I, of course, will be using the DDR5 version. So I've used this board before and I've personally been very happy with it. The Tough branding has been ASUS's mainstream affordable line and components. And this board has been designed to give you all the performance, ports, and features you would need without the crazy high prices of some of their other products. I mean, right now, if you do decide to go with a DDR4 build, you could pick this up for only $120, which is wild. For the IO, you've got a good amount of USB ports, a Type-C, Wi-Fi 6, and 2.5 gig Ethernet. On the front, we've also got some fairly large VRM heatsinks, a PCI Express Gen 5 slot that's reinforced for those heavier GPUs, a front panel USB Type-C connector, two M.2 slots, both PCI Express 4.0, and even a Thunderbolt USB 4 header on the bottom, which is pretty awesome to see. I think it's super easy to work with, has a nice aesthetic, and yeah, has everything you would need for a good gaming PC. I'll also be slotting in a one terabyte Samsung 970 Evo. Again, I use these all the time. I find them to be reliable and plenty fast. Okay, so the CPU cooler I chose is the Deepcool AK620 Digital. We'll talk about it a lot more in a minute, but this is a big cooler and it's going to overhang our dim slots, only giving us about 43 millimeters of clearance. So we will need some low clearance RAM. I have 32 gigs of DDR5-5600 CL36 Vengeance sticks, which sit about 35 millimeters in height. So that's gonna give us plenty of room to run both fans on the AK620. Installation isn't much different from any other air cooler. You have your standoffs and brackets for your chosen socket, and then you can secure that to the board like you would any other cooler. But the headlining feature of the AK620 digital is of course that digital display. And for that, there are just two cables that tuck between the outer fan and the fins that need to be routed to a USB header and an RGB header. Now, I would have preferred that they figured out a way to make a single USB instead, but it's not too big of a deal. The screen just kind of magnetically attaches to the top here. And you know, compared to all of the other screens that have all these customizable messages, messages and images. I actually really like the simplicity of this one. It displays the CPU temperature and that's that. The software that controls it is also incredibly simple. Just a menu in the taskbar with no other UI where you can select from the very few options. It's all really lightweight, which I appreciate, especially if you're someone who doesn't care for a ton of RGB or flare in their PC and just wants a simple display to keep an eye on their temps. I think this is a really cool option. As far as temps go, it seems to be able to handle the 13600K no problem. Topping out at 72 degrees Celsius after a few hours in Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty. Now, Alan Wake 2 is heavier on the GPU 
and that is reflected in the CPU temps staying in the low 60s. So now I want to take a minute to talk about this video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace makes building a website incredibly easy. You basically just choose a template from one of the hundreds available and customize it to fit your needs. You can add a blog, a video library, portfolio gallery, or even a custom online store to sell any of your physical or digital products, which is all controlled right on the Squarespace website with an analytics page so that you can track all of your website's traffic and online orders. You can also set up an online calendar for customers to easily book an appointment with you or use the marketing section to create email campaigns such as newsletters to send out to all of your subscribers. Even if you just need an online portfolio, Squarespace is the best platform to do it. When you're ready to get started, you can sign up for a completely free trial using the link squarespace.com forward slash Devin Johnston. And if you use the code Devin Johnston at checkout, you can save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Okay, now that the motherboard is prepped, it's time to move everything into the case. And so the one I'm going to be using for this build is the Deepcool CH370. Now, I think this has climbed my personal ladder as one of my favorite micro ATX cases of this year, as it's incredibly easy to work in, has a really solid build quality, includes some nice features like a magnetic tempered glass side panel and a built-in GPU support bracket to support those large up to 320 millimeter in length GPUs. And it can also support up to a 165 millimeter CPU cooler, which is enough room for our large AK620. It's also got some other little features like a spring-loaded headphone support and two front panel design options. But all of this is only $60, which is wild to me. Now, the only thing that would put this case over the top would be the inclusion of a Type-C connection. The Cooler Master Q300L that I built in a few weeks ago was also only $60, and they were able to swing a Type-C connector. So I know it's got to be possible. A few things I like about this case over the Q300L, though, is that it has a basement that hides the power supply keeping everything looking a little bit cleaner. That also adds a couple fan mounting points at the bottom, which is nice to see. And they've also included the longer screws that you would need to install the fans. And my other complaint about the Q300L was that I wished that they made the top removable to make it easier to access the connections on the top of the motherboard. Now, while the top of the CH370 is not removable, the motherboard does sit lower in the case. That makes it a breeze to plug everything in. Now you can fit up to a 240 millimeter radiator at the top or up to a 360 millimeter at the front. Because I'm going air-cooled, I'll just be installing three FK120 fans at the front here as intake, and then a single 140 millimeter Noctua fan at the top for exhaust. Then I'm gonna keep that pre-installed 120 millimeter Millimeter exhaust fan at the rear, although that one is only a three pin, so you don't get PWM. The three pack of the FK120s also include a four fan hub in the box, but because I'm using five fans, I'll be using the FH1 from Noctua to hook everything up. All of this combines to some fairly quiet noise levels. I'm measuring 42 decibels at a full gaming load using a standard fan profile. To power the system, I have a Corsair RM750 that I'll be using, which should be plenty of power for this 13600-7900 XT system. I'm measuring the power draw from the wall while gaming at around 520 watts. So let's just plug in everything we need for the power connectors and secure that into the case. Then we can plug in our case cables and power cables into the motherboard. For the GPU, I'm going with the 7900 XT. Aside from the NVIDIA Founders Edition cards, I think this 7900 XT cooler design is one of the best looking cards out there. But more importantly, you get a pretty decent performance per dollar out of the 7900 XT nowadays. Now, when the 7900 XT first launched at the MSRP of $900, it wasn't really the best deal. Since then, the price has lowered dramatically and you can find these fairly easily for around $800 or less. Now that's right in line with MSRP of the 4070 Ti. But the 7900 XT is around 10% faster in most situations without ray tracing enabled, but with ray tracing enabled, both GPUs perform mostly the same. But you also get 20 gigs of VRAM compared to the 12 gigs on the 4070 Ti, which is a significant advantage if you plan to play at 4K. Running through Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty in 1440p at the Ultra preset, turning off all upscaling, I'm seeing around 95 frames per second. In a game like this, you'd probably want to take advantage of the upscaling features and ray tracing. And so with the ray tracing ultra preset on, I'm seeing around 60 to 70 frames per second. Now jumping into Alan Wake 2, this is a new and very GPU intensive game. And here I'm seeing the 7900 XT hold up quite well, around 85 to 90 frames per second at 1440p in the highest settings at the native render resolution. So yeah, another satisfying build. If you were to go with a nearly identical DDR4 system instead, you would get very similar performance for just $1,500. And that's the big advantage to building micro ATX over ATX. You still get a system that is a more manageable size compared to an ATX tower, but you also don't have to pay the ITX tax. So I wanna know what you think about it in the comments below. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.